It's the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's GlomCon seminar. I'm Dio Wagaspeck in Houston, and today's talk is rituximab and adult protocytopathies, the rationale for its use, efficacy data, and outlook. And we're excited to have our speaker, Dr. Andreas Kronbeichler. Before we start our seminar today, I'd like to acknowledge the global effect effort that GlomCon has become. We thank all of our participants, those behind the scenes, and today we'd like to take a moment to thank one of our corporate sponsors, Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Vertex is a pharmaceutical company that invests in scientific innovation to create transformative medicines for people with serious diseases. They currently have studies ongoing in glomerular diseases, including a phase two, three adaptive study of VX147 in adult and pediatric patients with apol one mediated proteinuric kidney disease. We're thankful for their support and for your support for participating today. So without further ado, we'll turn it over to Dr. Krumbiegler to present to us. And we're excited again to have him today. So I will stop sharing and turn it over to you. Can you see my slides? Yes, perfect. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for the kind invitation to give this talk. And of course, for um, this NDALS um GlomCon efforts and, and everything you're doing for the glomerular disease space um, with all the trainings. This is really amazing. So this topic um, is, of course, something I've been working on for the last um, 15 years, roughly. And I think this is a very timely topic, given um, what we have learned over the past couple of uh, years. So these are my um, disclosures. And in the today's agenda, I think we should focus on the potential mechanisms of action of rituximab in bodocytopathies, then head over to a major part of this presentation that is talking about efficacy and what we have learned over the past couple of years, how effective rituximab is in minimal change disease and FSGS, and then uh, providing an outlook um, what will happen over the past uh, or the next couple of years in the space. So the learning objectives are clearly um, to name potential of uh, target effects of rituximab besides uh, mainly the CD20 depletion. Then review the efficacy estimates of rituximab in MCD and the same for FSGS. And we should talk about primary FSGS here. And of course, name potential predictors of relapse in patients treated with rituximab. When talking about botocytopathies and rituximab efficacy, I feel this is a really incomplete field. Um, like when you're visiting the Acropolis and you see a lot of missing pieces. So that's the same when I think about rituximab and botocytopathies. Etiology is very important, and I'm glad to see Shafa Kmirioglu, who was the leading force uh, here on the call today for this review we, we recently published in NDD. And as all of you know, um, FSGS and MCD are more like histopathologic lesions rather than disease entities. And we are coming back to date later on. Of course, we are talking about primary or immunological driven uh, FSGS cases. Then we have a lot of patients with undetermined causes, genetic FSGS, and a lot of different causes leading to secondary FSGS. And it's really hard to distinguish on the basis what we can see on the right hand side histopathology. Because if you perform a kidney biopsy, you will see these kind of lesions in different entities. So the Columbia classification is nice, but it's not really predictive of, of the cause um, relevant actually uh, to lead on to FSGS lesions. I really loved last year when Marina Vivarelli and colleagues published um, this review on childhood nephrotic syndrome in the Lancet and here on the left side, you can see this figure nicely displaying that MCD is mainly seen in the childhood uh, space and then it uh, declines, while FSGS remains uh, quite uh, stable over time and increases in adulthood. And then on the right side, you also see that membranous nephropathy is gaining momentum. And we know that membranous is the leading cause of adult nephrotic syndrome. In a review we have published last year, we have tried to actually outline the differences and similarities of uh, adults and children presenting with different forms of glomerular diseases 
And here is just a snapshot of what we've done with minimal change disease and primary. Music